Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to continue discussion on Fluent Migrator. As a part of today's video, I am going to cover two topics. Number one is how to create a database as a part of the migration. And number two, how to initialize table with data as a part of the migration. Now, in my last video, I actually never created a database. I just used existing database and added extra table into it and then created association with an existing table so I created an address table and I created an association with the existing employee table here now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how we create database with Fluent Migrator. Fluent Migrator doesn't support an out-of-box way of creating database. And I'm going to show how I do it in my projects. Now, if you look up on the internet, you can see that there was an issue created in the Fluent Migrator for exactly same purpose on how to create a database. Now, if you see here, there is a issue created in the Fluent Migration and the issue was essentially it would be nice if DB could be automatically created if it doesn't exist. And the answer for this issue before it was closed was this change is out of scope for this project. So hence it is not supported. Now question is how do we do it? Now for doing it, we are going to need a database connectivity and we are going to essentially select from sys.databases in the master. So let's say we want to create a database called demo. So we can always select the master database and do sys.databases where name is equal to demo for example and this doesn't return anything whereas if we do ef demo it's going to return one record so we can run the exact same query in our code and then if it doesn't exist we can use create table and then we can pass the name of the table that's essentially what we are going to do. So for doing that, what I'm going to do is inside of the migrations folder itself, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to just name it as database. And inside of that, it's going to be a static class because it's a very straightforward, it doesn't have any state and it is going to be used as a part of the startup.cs anyway. So I'm going to have a public static void migrate and it is going to take a couple of parameters. First one is the connection string. And second one is the name of the table. Now, once I have that, I need to create a SQL Server connection. So I can do using So I can create a SQL connection and pass the connection string. And then I want to execute a command to create the table. Now I can do it using ADR.NET, but I'm just going to use one of my favorite ORM framework, which is Dapper. And if you have not used Dapper before, I have a couple of videos on Dapper. I'm going to share the link above so you can check it out. But it's a fantastic ORM. It's a micro ORM and it's really easy to use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do connection dot query and this is from Dapper and here I want to do this right so for this one I don't want to pass the name like this because it's coming from outside so I'm just going to say at the right name and for that I have to declare parameters and I can say new dynamic parameters and dynamic parameters class is essentially part of the Dapper namespace and it is used for setting up the parameters. So then I can say parameters.add and I can pass the name of the parameter which is name and then the value is the value which is coming from here. And then this is going to return me a response and I'm going to say dot any and I can say here if not any means there is no table with the name that I'm passing then just do connection dot execute and here I'm going to pass in the this query and I'm essentially going to and here I'm just going to pass the name this should do so this method will ensure that the database is available now if we go to startup 
So here in connection string, I'm just going to change it to demo. And as you can see here, this database doesn't exist right now. So after I change this to demo, the next thing is I'm going to copy this connection string because I am going to need it for creating the database. So now here before the migration happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say database dot migrate. And as a first parameter, I'm going to pass the connection string and the connection string instead of demo, I'm going to pass it as master because I want to connect to master database. And then for the name of the database, I'm going to pass demo. So this should create the demo database. And then instead of demo database, I'm going to migrate up. But since it's a new database, the employee table would not exist like it did earlier. So what I have to do is I have to create the employee table here. So for this, I'm going to create a new table and I'm going to set the same name employee. And then with column, it's going to be same as this ID. I'm just going to copy paste because it's going to be exactly the same thing. Uh, now, one thing with identity is that if we use the extension method of identity for SQL Server, we can pass the seed and the incrementer. So we can pass this, which we essentially do most of the time when we create manually. So that one thing which I did not cover in the last video, I thought I'll cover it here. And then with column, let's just take one column as name dot s string dot not nullable and then maybe a third column of age dot as int and this is a nullable column let's keep it simple for the timing so that's the employee table and then everything else remains same after employee we are creating an address table and if you have not seen my previous video i strongly suggest you see so that you can understand how employee id is connected with the employee table with a foreign key and then we create an index on this employee id column of the address table a non-cluster index and then here since we created this table we want to delete this table just going to copy paste from here Okay, so now that both of these is created, I'm just going to run this application. And once I run this application, the demo database should be created. Both the tables should be created in the demo database. Oh, I have not passed the parameters. And this should be database and I don't need the columns around the name. Okay, so now if I run the application, so I have a problem because the port 5001 is taken by another application, but we can see here this is a problem. But before that, we should be able to see that the SQL server has created the database and all the associated table here, the Fluent Migrator would have created all of this. So we can see that, you know, it created the version table and after a version table is created and then it figured out it has to run this migration. And as a part of the migration, it created the employee table and then the address table and so on and so forth. And if we just refresh the database now, we can see that the demo database is created. And instead of demo database, we see employee and the address. And then finally the version info, which will have a single version in it. So things are working as expected. Let me also go here and change the HTTP port so that I don't see this issue again. So now everything is working just for making sure I'm just going to delete this table and just rerun the application once again. So I deleted the database. Let me just go and rerun this now. And if I run the application this time, I should not see any error. And you can see everything executed as expected and my API is working. And here also we can see that both the address as well as the this is the address and this is the employee both the databases are created and if i go here and refresh this database i can see the demo i can see the tables as expected and the address has a foreign key with employee id on the employee table and if we go to this primary key if we go to properties we can see identity seed as one identity increment as one that we use. So everything is working as expected and the version info also have the same version. So now that this is done, next thing to do is to add some data during migration. So let's say you want to add some configuration or default values. And for our case, let's consider that we want to add some default values to the employee table. So for that, let's create another migration and let us name it as 
we're going to name it as 06 14 2020 and 10 a.m. and then here we're going to use just like before the migration attribute and then here we'll derive from the migration base class it'll have up and down and now in the app we want to create some data or insert some data so for inserting data the property is actually insert it's very intuitive and then insert into a table as you can see the API is extremely fluent and into the table employee and what do we want to input we want to input a row and for the row you can see it's an object data as anonymous type so we can give new and since ID is auto generated the only two things we need is name and you can say name is fast employee and then age is 25 okay so we have name and age now here when we down basically when we roll back we want to delete so for deleting also it's very intuitive it's a delete from table employee dot row which row we want to so here you can see there are multiple options you can delete all the rows or you can delete a specific row and for the row we are going to pass the exact same object because we want to delete the exact same data and this is going to delete from the employee table the data that is inserted now in the startup we don't have to change anything because we are saying migration up so it will going to figure out which is the latest version and migrate up to that so now I'm just going to run this application and once I run I can see the migration actually is completed and now if I go into this database into the employee and I do a select I see that fast employee and age is 25 so this is exactly what we are expecting and if I go to the version info I can see that the new version is installed so now if I want to roll back so let's just go here and try to roll back to the previous version which is this one so here instead of migrate up we'll say migrate down and we'll pass this version number and let's run and now all we should see is the fast employee is deleted from this table so if we run now it is going to migrate down and then if I go to this table and execute it I can see that the data is been deleted now let's migrate up again and then we want to show something which is an update so if we want to apart from insert if we want to update what we are going to do so let's run this so this is going to create the employee again the employee table the ID is 2 because this is the second time it is creating so obviously the ID is 2 and the employee is still fast employee now if we want to update this data let's say we are creating another migration so let's copy this class and let's add another class and now it's 10 of 5 so let's say 10 of 5 add the class and just like before we're going to add the migration and then we are going to derive from migration implement the abstract classes and for modify or update again the name is extremely intuitive it's update dot table so we want to update employee dot set in the set we want to provide the data right what we want to update we are going to change the name let's say so we're going to say name is equal to second employee and here we're going to say whether it's all row or where so we are going to provide a where condition and in where we are going to provide again anonymous data type where we're going to say ID is equal to two that's it and now if we want to roll back when we do a migration down all we are going to do is we're going to make it as fast fast employee that's the name where employee ID is 2 that's all we are going to do and now here we're going to go and just do a migrate up and fast employee should change to second employee and if we go here 
we can see that the first employee is changed to second employee. Now let's migrate down to the previous version, which is just the insert into table, not necessarily the update. So when we migrate down to previous version, all it is going to do is execute this down and the second employee should change to first employee. So now if I run the application and if I execute, I can see it is back to fast employee and also the version number table is going to have only the fast two version. So that is all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel and if you have been getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video.